Hi, welcome to the lab. So the last time, the last video, um, we did some cleanup, code cleanup, and also handled ambiguous tokens. So, so maybe I have to start one step earlier. We are building a scanner generator library, and you can specify your grammars in such in the style like here, like I gave it here. Like you just create an instance of of a class, um, and then you can add all your tokens you care about to this class, and then you can uh, call a method and it gives you a grammar. So that is our overall overall API. And for example, in this uh, in this test code, uh, I defined two tokens are uh, ambiguous. So um, Basically, the, the token if and the identifier, they are, so basically the if token is included in the identifier. Um, but since if was defined previously in this list, um, it gets preferred. So for example, um, if I now run this code, um, Ah, this is our main, so let's merge our windows. Windows. <clears throat> I just, I'm just going to run this example and explain what it prints. It's not really great currently. So we get a huge um, automaton um, and its basic structure is as follows. I'm listing the states here. And then the transitions and states with a little star in front of them are start states. States with an exclamation point behind them are error states. And states in parentheses are accepting states. And all acceptance, accepting states have another token, another ID attached. So the first number is the state ID, second number is the ID of the token they accept. So for example, this state, uh, this state, state eight, accepts uh, this token. So this one, so I numbered them here so that I can easily find the, um, so which token, the token ID that I visually find it uh, faster. And yeah, for example, if we follow our automaton here, so first of all, we start always start in zero. If I follow the automaton for if, for example, so I found I find uh, i, then we transition to state ten, and in state ten, if we see f, then we uh, accept state six. So in state state six, we no we transition into state 13 and accept with token 6 and this is if. But for example, if we now would see another um, letter such as x, which is in this range, we will transition to 11. So for example, um, if we see if by itself, we accept with 6, so with the, we, ex we detect the keyword. But for example, if you write ifx, ifx, uh, then we would accept in well in 10 we are in state 10 and we transition via x since we see another x and x uh, in state 11 accepts in 7 so then we would see an identifier so this is what we worked on in the last video and today uh, i'm thinking to simulate our automaton as is so since I think we are able to define some tests when we can just naively simulate our automaton. I'm doing this. I'm thinking of working on this today. So basically, what do I mean by simulation? By simulating this, I'm, I want to have, I want to do the following thing. I, for example, would like to, I have a, the grammar here. I would like to do something like 
uh, I would like to simulate this grammar with this input. So let's see, let's say um, just for simple testing. So let's see. Let's say, for example, this. And then it would, I would like that this method returns either um, any, so I don't, I don't really know, I, I, I need to uh, figure out some great names. But for example, I would like to know if date we reach is accepting and which token it accepts. Um, which token it accepts. Token. If we if we reach the error token, or if we have just just if we are if we are just looking at any state. So there also is the possibility that we reached an intermediate state in our automaton, which is neither accepting nor an error state. So this I mean with any here. So and then for example, I could then um, write a test. So how we do this? Expect e. Um, so then we could do something like expect eq, and then we can just call our uh, simulate code, and then we could do something like um, simulation result. Accept. Or something like this. Um, let's see, how can I do this a little bit nicer? Um, so I have meta data defined here. I would like the token. So this should return not only an accept. So this can't be an enumeration, or it can't be just an enumeration. But yeah, let's. Let's work on this API. So, of course, this doesn't compile. So, let's just create a new file, I suppose, which I'm calling DFA simulation. And I think we don't need a class, it will be a free function. So oh, let's let's just model what we what we said. We said uh, uh, we would would uh, how did I call this method? If a simulate okay, um, and it accepts in a grammar instance. So a const residual uh, grammar. And and I'm putting this into the Zigil namespace. So Zigil is the name of our library, of course. And I don't know what this returns yet. And of course, I have to include my grammar. So, Zigil, not Signal, happens to me every time. Grammar. So, and of course, the return value is a tagged union of either um, success. 
for accept error or hmm. so I need some payload. So let's define a class which I'm calling maybe we should put this into the namespace DFA. And then we can drop the DFA in from the method signature. I think I like this better. So then we have an enum class called type, um, which just differentiates. Uh, where's our test call? So I think I'm reorganize this. So let's just keep this open. I would like to differentiate between the any we reached any state, an error state or the accepting state. So then relation result, let's say type. And I think I will do this private and the token, but I just return the name, the token name. So every token has a name. So I think I'm just going to return the token name. Token name. So and let's build some convenience constructors. So for example, if we reached any state, we can just use, use simulation result any. Uh, and then what do we also have? We have error and we have um, accept. And if we accept, we pass in a token name. Okay, so let's just define what we got. And then, then, of course, our simulate method can always return a simulation result. That's why we built this class. Oh. Um, let's just implement it really fast. So, with a class. So, I'm going to prefix the fields uh, with m underscore m underscore type and of course our token name which is only set um, if we are accept. This is the idea. So now, now the convenience constructors, the smart constructors or name constructors we want to call them like this um so let's make our life a little bit more easy and not prefix everything. Um, Oh, and in this case, we're just going to return the uh, any with the null uh, token name. I'm thinking we can implement the what's your problem? Well, sure.
And in this case, we're returning the type except top name we pass in. So this is just for our result type. So now we can dif differentiate, uh, differentiate between those type tokens. Of course, I think I'm now, let's just start with this. So this method should now basically exist. Um, let's include it. Um, with a simulation. In. Oh yeah. Okay, sure. And then we also need to pass in a text. Tools. And of course, in this case, I have to swap those definitions. Okay, sure. So, so now it should not build. So it should build, but it should not link since this method is not implemented. Yeah. So um, let's implement it. Oh, and of course, I can't implement it. Not implemented. So it is not implemented since we have we have no we can't in implement it currently since our grammar class doesn't hold any information. Uh, so we can't simulate our automaton. So to fix this, we need to keep our DFA, keep our DFA, and I think since we want to return the name of the token, um, we also need the mapping between token IDs and the names. But how do we want to do this? So, Or do we just do I just want to keep the original specification? <clears throat> so um, we have all information we need. I can just move this to a different class. Uh, so to a separate file, and then I could just reuse this. Do I want to do this? Or do I just want to keep a list? Let's start by using a, just a list. So. Um, let's just uh, keep a list of open names. And of course, I have my DFA, so the automaton. Um, So oh, do I, how does this work? So I built the automaton and I think I'm just doing the following. So also I have to keep my arena since, so basically uh, now I have uh, to change some things around. So, so I, that's not in it here let's forward declare it. so I'm just going to forward declare arena the allocator 
And then I can just do core arena. I'm just keeping instance. Ah, oh, well, no, I'm just putting it here, I think. Ah, I missed, and I like this. So, um, I'm keeping the instance here. So in the tokens, token names and the automaton, I also have to include the automaton. So the DF, DF, DFA. Okay. So I think I'm doing this. And um, yeah. So let's use the structure. So then I'm not. Why is explicitly deleted since M automaton has no default? I see. Why? I think ah yeah yeah I see. So it needs requires the arena. So oh, let's let's start by doing the following. Let's drop our the arena here, and let's move this declaration up. So now our grammar will provide the arena. So for arena arena. So oh, and here I'm just going to pass in the arena. So in this one, it can't be default constructed since this automaton uh, requires a constructor. Uh, so it, it requires an arena as in the constructor. So I'm thinking I have to implement it myself. So let's do it. So In its constructor, I'm going to de uh, default construct everything, but the um, automaton requires the arena. So now I should be able to default construct it. And Now, of course, this is not allowed to just create instance of the DFA, but it should write it into the grammar. So I'm just going to pass in the grammar, and this one won't return anything. And I um, have to change it like this. So here we pass in the, the grammar and then I can remove our DFA here and just point to the DFA in our grammar DFA so oh, and here I'm just going to arena, pass the arena along. Also here, grammar, arena. Sure, sure, sure. So now let's build accessor for the DFA. Uh -huh. So now everything should fall into pieces. So of course, I need error handling in this method. So it doesn't return an a, a automaton anymore. Uh, so I can just re remove the return since it just modifies 
the grammar in place. Um, should be fine. So what is missing? Of course I have to write the token names. By instance, how do I want to do this? Actually, I would only... Hmm. Uh, token names. So um, I don't know if this is possible in C++, but I would like to do something like this. I would provide mutable accessors, private and immutable, uh, in immutable ones. Public key. So, and this method. So, does it work? No, it does not work since I'm using static functions here. So, this is uh, this is a bummer. So, it doesn't really doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter, so just exposing it mutably. So compile errors should go away now. <clears throat> so and then I have just to fill out the token names. Let's do this during construction. So we create an automaton, propagate errors. Uh, remember our automaton, but also let's um, grammar token names at let's also remember our name of the token for so specification tokens. So I'm also accessing this here. So let's um, say just let's remember it as token. So token. I think it can be a construct. Oh, so this one takes a, a construct. So this should be fine. So this, let's rename this to token specification. Uh, and then we can just refer to it here as well. So here's the name of our token. So we're just collecting the names. So I'm sure this can now be a range-based loop. So let's be good boys here. Be refactoring. Uh, yeah, let's hear what C line actually says. So I think it's bang tidy. Actually. So and of course we not want to log during this creation. So we can also refactor this to our main method. So let's um, instead, let's just, so we also, we are able to um, access our EFA here. So let's log it here. Ah, so I have to have um, const and non-const overloads, sure. So I don't think we need a non-const arena, since this makes, doesn't really make sense. Um, so let's sprinkle some consts around. Also here, so now. I think we should be able to call this. And I don't know why this method wants to be called, uh, wants to be marked no discard by it. Let's just do this. 
Um, I close too much stuff now. So I think it should still work everything. Everything as before, and of course it doesn't since I'm also uh, already calling simulate here. So, but now it should work as before. <laughs> also, oh no, it does not. So arena. So it looks like a sec fault. Yeah, what's the problem? Let's just try to run unknown signal. What is what's this about? Oh, a trap. Oh, but I didn't set a breakpoint here. Oh, but it seems like that our grammar is not movable. Our arena is not movable. I think, but this, I don't know what the problem is, to be honest. So, um, arena, so it doesn't make sense that our arena, let's just do the following. Let's just um, forbid, delete the copy constructor and the copy. Uh, the move, no, the copy assignment operator. So, uh, operator copy. This doesn't make sense. So do we get some compile errors now? Could be a double double free. I think this is the problem. So, and the problem now is we try to move our grammar. And our move operator is implicitly de uh, deleted uh, since our arena can't be copied. But I think we have to make introduce um, the move operator for our arena. But I thought this is possible since we just we just have a list and our list should be movable our list is movable i thought that if you did not define any proof operators c++ defaults to them uh, c++ please we have to but why does it want to copy in a Following definition would be ill formed. Hmm. Okay, yeah, sure. So it wants to move our grammar. Yeah, sure. So I'm moving it out of the either. This is fine. Uh, no, I'm moving it into the either. So this, this error comes from here where I'm, I have a grammar instance and I'm trying to move it. In a either so this is fine and also could simplify this to this but so uh, uh, would be ill-defined blah 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 so it wants to but why does it does it want to copy an arena so why does moving a grammar yield cause a copy of an arena Moving a grammar, copy. We just have to define it. The destructor. No. But this is another. This is a different error message. But yeah, so the destructor is then, then private. So this is the same problem, but now it wants to copy a grammar. 
Let's also forbid this. Doesn't make sense. Only one instance makes sense, basically. So and let's also delete the copy assignment. Grammar, operator, const, grammar, reference, read, find. So what happens now? But why does it does it want to copy it? In instantiation of write, so we have a move a move operator for write. Use of deleted function. This is the copy constructor. But how the hell can this invoke the copy constructor? I'm explicitly moving the value here. I don't get this. How can this invoke the copy construct? Ah, was not expecting this. So, um, all right. I'm trying to move a in grammar into a either. In it. Why does this one want to copy my instance? That, that, that doesn't make sense. I put move here. Why doesn't it move it? I move it inside our right. I move it inside our. We do move it here. So maybe I can't do this like like I do it here. So so let's do this a little differently then. So let's try to reinterpret. This storage as an R. And then we can just uh, move assign uh, R. Does this fix our problem? Don't know if this really works. Doesn't work. Since now, we can't move a sign. Oh. Automatons. Where do I try to move a sign and automaton? Here. But why does it, does it want to copy it? I don't want to copy this. I want to move it. So let's let's also forbid copying automatons. And also the copy assignment. So we're now releasing. 
it's not possible. I don't get it. Use of deleted function. Yeah, sure. I don't want to copy it. I want to move it. But why? Why I can't, this is not possible. Why is this not possible? Does it work like this, maybe? Doesn't work. Why can't I move out of my ether? Or maybe let's test this a little bit separately. Let's um, create a test function that returns an either. So let's do a, I don't know, an integer and a class which I'm calling test. I'm going to invent this. Uh, yeah. Then I'm just returning um, a value of type. A failed either so like this moving an instance of test inside so in a class test looks like this it gets a string so let's do a list of integer and let's just fill with some garbage um, so let's add some numbers one, two, three. So what? Ah, oh, yeah, oh, sure. The public. So now I can do make either. Else I can move out the test. SD move the release right. So this I think this should work. Uh, and now of course mimic the same behavior. Let's forbid copying test. Eat and also let's forbid the uh, delete the copy assignment operator. So what does it build now? What does it do now? Of course, everything else still doesn't compile. I'm tested kind of individually. I just comment everything out.
Or maybe let's just comment everything out in this class. Can I just do this? Yeah, so sure. Uh, now we can test it a little bit more isolated. So, um, why does this method require the copy copy constructor? But I thought I'm moving the value. So, what is my problem here? So, right. So, I have an overload. Um, why does this one require the copy? We have to do this. So, it uses the copy, the copy constructor. Why? So why does this one choose the copy constructor? Isn't the default construct the default move constructor generated? Um, so why is why default move constructor is missing in test? This is what I have to find out. So I, I would expect that if I don't specify a default move constructor and it gets auto-generated in terms of the members. So let's see, default move constructor plus plus. Is there such a thing? Or do I have to default explicitly default it? Let's do this, let's try this. Let's force the compiler to generate one default. Uh, and also the move, move assignment. Is this literally the fix? Okay. <laughs> sure, now I can re resurrect everything else. So oh, this is literally really easy to fix, but I was a dum dum. So I'm just going to define force the compiler to generate one default, and also the default move assignment operator. Aha! But it tries. Why doesn't it work? I think since some uh, anything of this. Let's just read it. Arena has a deleted move constructor. Yeah, sure, but I can do this. I can just force the compiler to generate one too. So default and also the move assignment operator default. Sure. And this uh, now, I think this should compile now. So this warning is not up to date. Arena now has a move constructor. Um, Arena. Why does it still try? Ah, because I missed a an ampersand. So oh, let's resurrect the code I just uh, commented out here. Let's see if everything builds. Um, here is it. Oh, 
for now, uh, automaton also needs some me some massaging. So we delete the copy constructor, but we add the default move constructor and stay and of course same with the move assignment operator default sure 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 but what's what's your problem now uh, it is implicitly deleted because we have a reference type for arena ah let's just Remember this one as a pointer then and create a helper method um, with the with a good API so that I can just access arena like this. Arena. So then I have to fix the constructor, I think. Uh, constructor, constructor, yeah, I have to remember the pointer. And in this case, I have to ex go through my accessor. But, well, I don't have to, but I want to. So now I should be able to move it. So let's reset the. Um, so what did we do here previously? So we placement mute um, and delegating to the move constructor. So does it work now? Yeah, it builds. Okay. Excuse my excitement. So does it crash? No, it works. Yeah. <laughs> this was a a a wild ride, but I learned. I learned a thing. Nice. Okay. So now we can relate. So I think we now have every pieces of information that we require to actually simulate. So we have access to the automaton we have access to the token names i'm thinking i think we can now just implement the simulation so and we already defined the public interface so um, let's resurrect this line just get straight to it so What I now need to do is to find the start state. I did this, I already did this. Where did I do this? I did this in class grammar as the first helper function, start state. But this was defined for NFA. Um, Let's maybe let's move this into our class. Um, so let's join this code and go to um, what I'm what do I do? What do I do now? So our NFA automaton, and let's just put this here. Start state doesn't change. Well, all this implementation, of course, will be out of line. So let's generate a stop and don't need the argument since we are now working on a instance. So NFA can be replaced by this. So in this case, I can just drop it. So sure, this is great, but it is never used. We will change this since we introduce a compile error. So 
Now we need this. Just to rewrite this to NFA dot uh, start state. And I'm also copying this method uh, to our DFA. Uh, and of course, it returns a DFA start state. And the implementation will be the same. So I hate to copy and paste it, but I think I am literally. Just doing this. Um, okay, so now I can do the following. Let's say if um, no, let's just get the start state. State is gamma DFA Let's remember the DFA. We need to access this a little off more often. So and of course a const since we think we're just consuming this in a constant fashion. So I think also have to add const overloads of this. Then I think I'm just oh. I just always return a const pointer. So how is it used? It is used here. And this one accepts a non-const. Mm. So I need both for NF. What can I just delegate to this? And because this is not const. But let's cheat. So I'm casting to NFA uh, this um, so I'm just cheat cheating to um, don't have to to not implement this multiple times. Can this just be made const? Not sure about this. Can I return a non non const pointer from a const method? I can. Okay, sure. Then I'm doing this. Let's just also do this here. So a const. But in this case, I don't really want to modify the const. So I think the API of my DFA will be const only. And of course, I have to change this here as well. Good. So now I should be able to open my simulation. Start state. And let's assert that we actually get a start state. State is not null pointer. Or so then we can just assert state. Okay. And now basically we do the following iterate through our uh, string. So Uh, so let's just get the character from our input 
and then we're going to move. So we're going to move from this, um, let's call it transition, from this state using this character, we reach this state. Let's also pass in the DFA and then we can and then this is a helper method. So state um, DFA state DFA state. So we pass in the DFA. Automaton, pass in the current, current state and a character. And for now, we're just going to return null pointer and assert false. So we have to implement this, of course, but for now we can just say if state um, is the if we are the error state, we're just going to return uh, our error result. State is accepting. We're going to do. We have to, of course, return the. We are accepting, but also we have to specify the token name, and the name of the token is grammar. So state, I think state has then a token index, and we can use this um, to access our token. So grammar token names. We have the inbounds. So the inbound uh, inbounds method is public. So Token name. If this is a valid index, we're just going to token. I think I have a missing a parenthesis here. So token name is token names like. So then I have a valid token name. So in every other case, I'm thinking I miss a parenthesis. So this return, I think I fucked up like this. Um, so if we are in the error state, we return the error result. If we accept, compute the token name, um, we compute the token name, I think we should always be in bounds. So I think I'm just going to this. Since the index access already asserts. So um, and then if we neither are an error state nor are accepting, we are just we reach just any state. And of course, um, what does this one cry? Pointer may be null. Yeah, sure, since we return a null here. Don't, we won't do this. So we already asserted, oh, I think we can skip this assertion and move it here. So we assert that the state we're getting is non-null. And I, th and I think we can just 
find the correct state. So let's just say DFA, let's go through all arcs. So for auto, against auto arc, out of arcs, arc origin state, and we found an outgoing arc. And then uh, also if arc character set contains our character, then we found the next state. Um, So then we're just going to remember the uh, target. Um, but let's check that next null pointer. Transition is Non um, yes. So basically, we have a DFA, so each transition should be unique. So we should never find a arc, uh, an, an ambiguous uh, transition, basically. So I think it should be fine. So and then we are just going to return next. And also, we should always find a next pointer. So I'm also asserting next here. So does our program build and does it run? It builds and it runs. So nice. What do we get here? So if I run this now. So we're simulating our program on a open parentheses using our grammar and we let's see what the result is so we accept this is expected and we match both in open parentheses so i think now we can do some simple unit tests uh, so that we just cover the dfa creation But I think I don't want to create tests which test the structure of the DFA since it will be a pain. Um, if I decide to change the structure or create new AST nodes, um, yeah, then I have to adapt all the tests. So I think it's a little bit more stable if I'm just uh, treating this as a black box, just throwing some tokens at it and looking uh, and look what happens actually. So in this case, well, this works as expected. So, and I think I can just write some tests. So let's see. So these are parallel. I think I'm just going to keep them in one file for now. Parser tests. Let's maybe I just want. I want to put them in a separate directory. No, I don't. I don't want to do this. But in a separate file, maybe. Let's put them in a separate file. I think we should at least put them in a separate file.
Well, actually it doesn't really matter. So let's do another method which I'm calling, which I'm naming a simulation test. Oh, and I'm thinking to the following. So I have to keep my grammar around for this kind of test. Destroy it after the test. So I'm thinking to build a class for this in my test file. So just um, in relation test. Oh, how do I want to use this? Um, so basically, I want to do it similar like similarly like here. So. Uh, where well, yeah, here. So basically, I have to keep my grammar around. And how do we want to? So basically, I would like to find one grammar and use it for the several tests. Well, let's let's do simulation calculator simulation calculator. I can't spell calculator sim simulation. No, like this. So, and here I would like to create a method. Called simulate. And it returns a, how is it called? A simulation result. So just a little helper thing for my test. So this is called DFA with digital a simulation result. And I, of course, have to. So with a simulation. And it gets a pass in a string view input. And it is const. So and in the constructor I'm going to initialize the state of the test. So I'm just going to for now just Doing this code. Yeah. What I'm doing. It's just doing everything for now. And so I have to keep an instance of my grammar. So let's do this. Digital grammar. Oh, let's see. This small toy example, I will also only accept um, plus star open parentheses, close parentheses, literal and identifier and white space. Fine. Oh, and I will clean this a little up since this is my test code and it also prints the token. So, um, 
Oh, and of course, this test, this can fail. So I've, I don't want to put this into the constructor. I'm going to put this into initialization method. So So let's ignore it, compile. Let's just print the error here. Here, instead of, I'm just moving this my member. On, oh. Do I do something wrong? Grammar has a private default constructor. Make it public. And move grammar. Okay. Ah, yeah, I see. This is basically called move assignment operator is basically deleted. So, why is this the case? Because formatting. Uh, implicitly can't be copying. Ah, did I did I add this for? Ah, I defined this for NFAs, but I forgot it for DFA. So do this. Um. So so copy constructor is deleted, but the move constructor will be default and same with the move the copy assignment operator will be deleted nope. and the move assignment Or why is this operator? Ah, yeah, it is deleted by arena, the reference. So let's also store this one as a pointer. Do the same trick. Um, as in the other class. So now I have to remember the arena as a pointer and now go through the accessor with the dot operator of the pointer. So now it should build again. Nice. <clears throat> so let's go back to our tests. Now we move. If I forget how it works. So this thought this should default. I think here the IDE is missing to print a ampersand. Let's let's double check. Oh yeah, well if it uses it uh, points to the correct call, but I think here, um, ampersand is missing in the, in the hover thing, in the pop-up. Well, doesn't really matter. So then to simulate, I'm just going to 
all the free function EFA simulate. Um, didn't I already improve this? Yeah, I did. Why didn't does it doesn't it find it? Ah, did you? So simulate. I'm passing the grammar, grammar, and the input. Just returning the data set. But this is just a stupid helper. So now and do. Calculator test. Um, you can simulate basically every token, see that the correct one comes out. So let's use a shorter name. Um, well, now I think. Just missing one little piece. So let's remove. We are, of course, always running our tests. So let's keep doing this. I don't need to include this here. And now we need one little piece missing. So to we have to uh, make the result comparable. But I think. Um, I want to do the following. I think I want to. No, I think the expect equals um, macro just compares the value as is. I think I want to create an overload. So, um, of course, I could create a the equality operator for the DF the simulation result, but I think if so let's just test it. Um, let's show it. So for example, if I create the equality operator and the define the equality operator and the non-equality operator. And if I would now implement this, so let's just do it in line. So if type is equal to uh, other type, then we are equal. Also, if the token name, so I, I just I think I can just always compare it since well, it is an if it is a null token, it's also equal. Another null token. So this should be the val a valid implementation for the equality operator. So now I should be able to use this macro expect equals. So let's just use this expect equals. So the expected is the letter U. So then I can just um, if a simulation result, for example, construct a dummy value. No problem. Ah, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Ah, it uses the formatter to print it. Perfect. So I can just find the equality operator. But I need a way to print out my simulation results. This is perfect. So let's let's do the following. Let's just using the namespace digital DFA inside of this method function, whatever. So this is a little bit shorter now. And now I have to create uh, define a formatter. So core formatter. So namespace for the template specialization for class formatter. Um, if a simulation result.
Uh, and we get this as a const reference. So, so let's implement this. Oh, we get a string builder and we get a simulation result. And we start. Now we just have to format this. And to do this, we to include uh, core formatting since there we have another help, uh, we have more helper method to format our string. So, first of all, we're going to switch from our result. Um, we can't access the type, so let's build accessors for it. So I think we need, we need accessors for both of those. So let's do this. So um, const. Turn M type you um, turn M token name node what I want this no discard no discard Type is not implemented. Yeah, it is. Thanks. So then let's continue working with our relevant method. So let's handle all cases. Define a local type alias for this horribleness. Um, let's print this as so. Uh -huh. Print I think we're just going to print uh -huh. We're just going to print any. Oh, in the case of an error, we will also print just print error in the uh, in that case. So if we did accept, we not only print the. Uh, we accept, but also we print which token we accepted. So result dot token name like this. Then we uh, can put a assertion here and unreachable since we expect not to this point. Unreachable. So I mistyped it. We return in every case. So I think uh, now our test should compile. Yeah. Please run now. Oh, and I think, well, the test fails since I define a wrong test. So I ex I'm expecting a, so I, I uh, said that I expect an error which prints this value. So I, I quite like this. So um, 
I expect equality macro uses the quality operator to compare the values, but it uses formatter to render them. So I don't throw them garbage here. So I think this leads to great test uh, uh, failed tests, basically. So, and then of course, I expect. Uh, um, so, of course, in this case, I expect the open open parentheses. In this case, I expect close parentheses. So, which tokens I am defining? Plus star. Let's just do all of those. Plus star. Plus. Uh, and then copying the names from here. So literal white space. Okay, let's test some white space tokens. So a space should of course be a white space. Um, but two space should also be white space. And of course, a new line should also be white space, and a tab also be white space. So let's run this and see what happens. Aha. Uh -huh. T is an error. So did I didn't I specify T in my test case? I did not. Let's include it. So and then carriage return should also be white space. Um, so, and of course, if I swap this around, it should also be passed as white space. Okay, works, those work. Um, so let's do the more tests for Yeah, no. Thanks. So let's try some literals. So zero should be a literal, but also should be one. Also, also like or twenty. No, let's let's just keep it. Let's just do some tests here. So those should be all passed as literals. And let's do identifier next. So this example, I don't have an if defined. So a ABC should be an ID identifier, but also should if in this case, and also my list, for example. Um, but also test. So now let's do some more testing. So let's move those to a separate scope. Well, let's don't do this. Maybe a different function. Do this. this. Let's put them into a separate function. So I could also drop this class. 
do this. So I could also move this code directly into the test. And um, in case of an error, I could just skip the test. Uh, and then instead of, instead of calc dot simulate, I then ha would have to write Simulate grammar. So now the whole class can go away. So I already removed it. Perfect. Then I'm just calling this method if if a simulation tests, let's rename it to calc calculator. Then let's copy the whole thing. Call this one uh, conflict. And let's simplify this example. I'm just going to keep the identifiers open and I will also introduce the uh, if token. So this stays the same. And then just keeping the identifier tests. Um, but this one, so let's use another case here. So f if x would be an identifier in this example in all cases, but in this case, if x should be an identifier, but if would be a keyword. So I did not not running this code. So I, also, I, I think I can define it as static. This method. This method. So. So oh, now it works. It, so the test works as expected. So let's change this one just to look at the test output. So and it works as intended. So I simulate using this grammar. Um, so the result is if, but I specify that I that I require an identifier, but this is of course not correct. Why is this this maybe conflict in the reserved identifier? What? Why is this a reserved identifier? Can't I use double underscore? Well, let's let's just ignore this. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, let's see what we can. 
that here. So we did quite some things. Um, so let's do all of our learned changes. So we move operator and so that our let's do every change that we require every change that made our values movable. So this is this, this, and this, but not the start state helper method. Okay. So then grammar. Um, I think those changes are required, but I think I will keep this, move this into a separate commit. So also, I can commit everything here, this hunk, and everything below. So then, stage this. So here we change the excess here as well. So so I won't deal with this yet. We'll do this next. So what did we do here? So basically we remembered the arena, the token names, and the Automaton, but this will be a separate commit. So in here, I think we did everything. So this is a fine first commit. Uh, and also do the arena change. So uh, what did we change? Make core arena. A gamma NFA movable, but not, but not copyable. 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 Okay, I think this is how you spell this. Let's double check. Sorry, I can't speak English. Copyable. Yeah, looks looks good. So then let's do the start. Factoring the start state. Um, so, and of course, this change is weighted. Also, this. So, let's double check start state. The only match. Start state here as well. And of course, so we are currently not. Uh, staging this one. So, of course, this class, this change also requires this method, but we will just commit it separately before that. Um, Introduce method on automaton classes 
to get start state. Um, set of start state uh, being a free function. Uh, now it's now uh, the same fun functionality functionality is provided by NFA automaton automaton start date. Instance method. Um, also, is introduced to mirror the automatons APIs. Instead of start state being a free function, being a, uh, being a free function, and functionality is now to add a now, now provided by the start state instance method. Okay. Also, if a start state is introduced. No, oh, the automatons API. Okay, sure. Makes sense. So, and those changes are all related to the simulation. So, maybe let's do grammar, the changes in our grammar first. Um, Um, let's just work on a description and then summarize it as a title, I think. So, um, in order, so we want uh, to do some things um, with the resulting Zidge grammar. Um, for example, uh, we might want to simulate the resulting DFA. Um, so we have to keep information around. We want to do some things with the resulting grammar. Right. For example, ah, not remove everything. We want to do some things with the resulting. Grammar, so we have to keep some information around. So, what do we want to do with the grammar? We want to do some things with the resulting grammar, for example. Um, uh, 
using the created EFA to generate a scanner. A C plus plus a scanner. To generate a scanner. For example, in the created DFA, created DFA to generate a scanner, it could also be used for unit testing. Well, sure. This, of course, requires us to remember some information. In this patch, we actually keep around um, Mm -hmm. we re what do I want to say here? In this patch, we remember the, remember the DFA and the token and the names of token. Mm -hmm. This allows us. Unit test black box um, the auto automaton automaton creation. Algorithm creating automatons. So something like this. So Remember the useful data inf information in digital grammar. So then I can, of course, just commit the simulation. Simulate. Um, Well, I DFAs. So run DFA on a input string. Um, and this big Tom conference. Run DFA on an input string and return. Return the resulting state kind. Run terminus finite automaton on an input string and return whether the simulation. Yields last state either um, the error state any 
uh, the accepting state. Any other state. Well, one digit deterministic finite automaton on an in input string and return whether the last state is either the error state, ac the accepting state, and which token it accepts. Um, or any other state. So, and then we define some unit tests for our um, simulation. So, unit test. Uh, so of course this is not those are just a few tests but I think it's better than nothing and of course we have a to do I think we're just going to commit this as a just going to amend this last commit Okay. So now, I think, um, what should we do next? Um, I think we now can do the following. I think now we can actually work on a scanner driver. <laughs> this is really the correct. Right pouch pouch now. So we have our deterministic finite automaton. I think we could now let's just I think we we should be we should build a table out of this next. And of course, um, now I would like to use this grammar to do something else. So basically, I would like to uh, create an instance of a class, give it the grammar, and then it should be able to pass it. So I then would have a uh, yeah. Well, ba basically, I, I I would like to have a class. I give it a grammar, and then I can just plug, plug it into a parser and it then just able to pass the tokens that, that I just defined. So, but how do, how do we do this? Also, so I'm not really sure um, what we will do next, but yeah, maybe we will work on a class which is able to accept a grammar. I'm already able to simulate the, the scanner. Of course, this is horribly slow, but um, so this is basically just for testing, but we could we could implement a scanner driver and we could define this generically so that we can either do simulation or just what uh, build a table out of it. So I think. 
Oh, I'm not really sure what we do next time. I, as, I, as I already said, I think we're just, I'm just I, I'm thinking we're just going to work on something and come uh, move our target, our state implementation closer to completion and yeah, basically uh, try to pass something. Uh, well, this could also be fun. So, yeah. So I think uh, that's that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, I hope. Um, you liked what you saw and basically have a great day. Thanks, see you next time. Bye.